Hey, my name is Eric. I'm going to share my testimony on how I found Jesus. And um, so, yeah, thank you for watching and like this video. I'm going to dive in. So I basically grew up in a small town and um, I was a sheltered kid, kind of grew up with the Leave it to Beaver family, conservative. My dad uh, was a business owner. He owned his own heavy equipment rental yard, and my mom was the secretary, and she managed the books. Um, so it was a very idyllic setting. You know, uh, they were married. They were happy. I had an older sister. I liked music. I used to play by myself or with one other friend. I wasn't the most popular in school, and I wasn't the least popular. I was, I was just kind of in the middle and uh, neutral. Um, when I was 12, my mom bought a book on Jesus. It was a children's book for Jesus, and I was very excited to learn about Jesus. And um, it was it was a very innocent time, you know. I my mom was super sweet. She was like an angel herself. Her her dad died when she was only uh, seven, so she had an angelic spirit. I think her job in life was to, um, or her duty in life was to comfort others with her um, her angelic nature. Um, I just I was very lucky to have both my parents, but so she used to read she used to read to me. Um, the Jesus story and I was 12 and she used to tuck me into bed at night and she would read a couple a chapter in that book and I was very innocent and excited and I was like Jesus sound sounds amazing mom and I'd love to meet him one day and um, I was just very innocent and um, you know kids used to pick on me at school because I was very gullible uh, I was just this innocent little towhead who smiled a lot. And um, I was very insecure, though, too. Um, so I basically, you know, that was fine. And I was very excited about Jesus. But then two years later, I was 14. And I wanted to impress um, the bad kids in school. I wanted to um, show off. And the only way I could think about showing off to them and winning them over was to devise a plan to rob my next door neighbor's house. And my best friend lived next door. So it would be a big, you know, diss to my friend. We probably wouldn't be friends anymore, but I didn't think it through. Um, I was just like, this would be an easy target. This would be an easy house to you know, rob and, and take the possessions. And I told my two friends about it and they were excited and they were like, yeah, let's do it. And I knew that my neighbors, they went to, uh, they went, they went out to dinner. Uh, it was very predictable. They went out to dinner every Friday night, Wednesday and Friday night at like six thirty PM. So I was like, okay, we're going to do it Friday night, six thirty. And I listed off all the stuff that was in the house. And I was like, you know, there's lots of cool stuff that you can grab. And uh, the word kind of spread through the school. You know, we are definitely not, I was definitely not quiet about it. I was talking loud about it in the locker room. And one of the boys overheard me and he later told the police. But um, we broke into the house and um, only took like four things. And we got so scared. There was a dog barking in the hallway behind a closed door and we, got, we freaked out and ran down the street. And I ran down the street so hard that that night I had extreme uh, leg cramps. And my dad, as sweet as he was, he ran in. He was very concerned and he was like, what is it, what is it? And I was like, I got leg cramps. And he massaged them. And I mean, my parents were amazing, but, um, when they found out that I robbed that house, um, it, it turned into a different family. Uh, my dad rushed in when he found out that I robbed the house, he rushed in at me. I was on my bed and he rushed towards me with his hands over his head. Like he was going to pound me. My mom was screaming at him to stop. She was at the door crying. And it was such a horrific scene. It, it felt surreal. Like it, it didn't, it, it didn't register to my little 14 year old mind, but 
I was like, I need to pretend to cry or they're going to really kill me. So I was like, no, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. And I didn't know that that would, you know, haunt me the rest of my life or almost because, um, I didn't know how bad I hurt them. You know, when I was 14, I was like, oh, you know, they'll get over it. And I'm, I'm cool. You know, like I'm 14, whatever. But, you know, as my mind matured and I got older early, I think deep, deep down, I, I had very low self-esteem and I had that guilt and shame of, of doing that to my parents. So, um, that was the end of Jesus for quite a while. And, and I also learned, I also picked up, uh, I started listening to hard rock. So when I was 12, I, I listened to Iron Maiden. I heard Iron Maiden on the radio for the first time. And I was like, what is this? And my mom bought me a drum set. So I'm, I'm rocking out, playing drums, hanging out with the wrong kids and, uh, got into, um, smoking a little weed when I was like 16 and 17. I tried a beer when I was 17. I was really innocent. I thought one beer would get me drunk. And um, I was scared of it. Um, in fact, my friend gave me a beer and I poured half of it out in a sink in, in another room so he wouldn't see me do it. Um, but I started getting bad grades and just listening to hard rock and, and started fantasizing about being a demon and flying over the high school and killing all the bullies and giving the girl of my dreams a black rose, you know, just being kind of like mysterious and demonic. And I thought I had power. I didn't really summon demons or anything. I was just like visualizing this while I listened to my music every night. Nothing happened out of that. Um, when I was 18, my friend, one of the friends that robbed the house with me, he, he started going to a Christian, Christian school and he turned his life around slowly. You know, it took time for him to change. The sanctification process takes a while. And, um, but I was starting to see him change for the better. And I was like, if he can change, God can change anyone because he was the worst. I mean, he treated his parents horrible and, uh, you know, he used to get in fistfights with his dad. And I'm just like, how is that possible? You know, I was, I was from an innocent family and, and seeing his family and him talking to his dad the way he did. I was just like, I can't believe he's God has found a way into his life. So my friend, when uh, we were 18, he, he took me to a Christian rock concert. It was uh, Carmen. The concert was Carmen. The rock, the, the singer, was his name was Carmen. And uh, we, he played in the Tacoma Dome in Washington. And we went. And I was just like, I could feel the energy in the room in the Coliseum. It was palpable. Palp and... Uh, <laughs> And uh, I could feel the energy in the room. It was thick and it was, it was holy. And I was just like, wow, this is pretty cool. You know, but during this time I was doing, I was doing LSD and I was listening to Led, Ze Led Zeppelin. I thought I was a hippie. I was wearing Birkenstocks, playing hacky sack with the skater boys. And uh, so I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool, man. I, I felt something that's pretty cool. Um, but that was it, you know, um, that was pretty much my experience for now. And, um, so I, I started drinking, I became an alcoholic and I was drinking every night and, um, it was, it was pretty bad. And I, I finally got, I left my parents. They didn't know where I was. I was dating an older woman who was 20 years older than me and I was drinking wine and she turned me on to the art world and writing and I was writing poetry. I thought I was like Jack Kerouac or something. And, uh, you know, every once in a while I would black out and I would, I would be very mean to her. And she would, in the morning, she would be like, you know, you, you did this to me. And I'd be like, no, no, I didn't. You know, cause that, I couldn't believe that that was me. You know, I was like, I, there's no way I, I did that to you. And, and then I'd be like, no, I'm sorry you know, and I'd cry. And then, you know, a few months would go by and, and I would black out and do something again. And the third time we'd been together for like four years. And the third time I blacked out 
and it was a really bad blackout and I wanted to go for a walk with her. I was like, you know what? We're always hiding at home. I want to go out with you and, and be a real couple. And she was like, no, I, I'm really tired. I just want to read my book. You know, she was an avid reader and, uh, I was like, no, it's, you know, and all of a sudden I, um, I, I blacked out, but, um, I remember, uh, you know, I mean, I was wasted, but all of a sudden I had this real, I was, I could think clearly, but it wasn't, it wasn't me. And I remember looking at her and she was, she had fear and I got excited by seeing that she had fear and I, I had this thought and it wasn't me. Okay, I've never thought this way in my life before. Something took over. Because normally when people are drunk, they're like cloudy, fuzzy, you know, they can't think straight. I was very clear and it wasn't my thoughts and my and I got excited seeing her scared. And my thought was I could take her life. And I got excited thinking about it. And it wasn't me. Cause there's, because then I came back in to the picture. Like I, I regained my consciousness and I started to cry and I was like, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, please. I'm sorry. And then all of a sudden it changed to that other, the demon and the demon was like, <laughs> and, it, and that happened three times. It was like me. And then it was the demon. And the demon loved seeing her scared. And he was like, uh, you know, got excited that, uh, you know, I could take her life. I never thought that thought in my life. So she basically ran out of the house. And uh, I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I came back and that was the end of that. That was the end of the demon. But, you know, she kicked me out, of course. And... Um, it was a legal battle and I was homeless for a couple weeks and then I finally went to Job Corps. Um, so fast forward like many, many years, um, I was, uh, you know, I, I basically was flipping burgers for a living, getting drunk every night, had a heart attack when I was 32 from alcohol, just massive alcohol and I was dehydrated and hungover. At a new job, flipping burgers. It was actually, I was flipping omelets that morning and I had a pain in my chest. And I met a born again, a born again waitress. She was very sweet. I got along with her great. And we used to talk a lot when she was, when it was her shift and I was cooking and she was a waitress. It was a small restaurant, so it was usually just her and I. And, um, but when I had, was having my heart attack, I was laying on the sidewalk outside the restaurant and trembling and I was white and I had already gotten sick in the bathroom and she was praying over me and I was kind of listening to the prayer like that that held me on and um, I got airlifted to the nearest state hospital in Seattle they put a stent in my artery it was 80 percent clogged and they opened up my artery and uh, I never thanked her um, I don't think I did, but after that, I, ba I basically quit that job and I didn't see her again for a long, long time. So I was like, wow, that's, that's kind of crazy, you know? And I didn't think of, I didn't, I thought it was a fluke. So I kept drinking harder than ever after that for four more years. And then, um, I got in, I got in trouble and I started dating a very, uh, I was in a very volatile, uh, relationship and I almost died from alcohol stopped eating food and um it was it was really just a, a horrible time um and then fast forward to 2016 i was with a new girl and she was spiritual and um she turned me on to plant medicine we went to peru um i started um you know eating better stopped sugar stopped cigarettes and um started praying and one night she was at work and I was listening to, um, uh, Brian head Welch. He's a Christian. Um, well, he was a born again. He was the guitar player for corn. He is, he is again now, 
but um, he started his, his own Christian rock band, and it was just called Brian Head Welch at that time. And he had a song called L-O-V-E. And I was, I was rocking out and uh, in, the, in our home, and she was at work. So I, I was just listening to the music, and then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit hit me, and I just started bawling. And uh, it felt like a fatherly love I'd never experienced in my life. And uh, I couldn't, you know, I cried for three, four hours. And all of the sh shame and guilt and everything lifted off my shoulders. And um, I felt relief and I felt peace for the first time in my life. And, um, you know, that, that was, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I think I'm born again. And, um, then I started, I started listening to, um, some meditations and one of the meditations, it was like a YouTube recording was about, um, calling in the archangels and it was a meditation and I was laying on the floor of the house in the house. And, um, actually it was a converted school bus. That's what we lived in, but I closed my eyes and I was listening to this. And it was good archangels, you know, like Archangel Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, Metatron. And as the audio was calling them in, I could smell this very old, wealthy fragrance. It was wafting through the floor past my nose. And I knew that an angel had entered uh, our, our home. And, um, I was just like, wow, I've never smelled an angel before. And it was like the richest scent in the world. Um, and it felt very peaceful. Um, so that was a great experience. And then I had a dream a couple weeks later that I met my guardian angel and he was, um, he was, it, he seemed like he was a biker dude. I don't know. He had scars on his face. But the love coming from him was absolutely amazing. It was it was like a, my long lost brother. I never had a brother, and I just you know he hugged me, and I was um, when I came out of that dream, I I couldn't stop crying. I mean it was it was a love that I never experienced before. So it could have been an archangel, but I think it, I think it really was my guardian angel, and I think I've met him before. Um, in previous times. And I, I've been saved many times. I'm realizing that I used to drink and drive. One time I snorted black tar heroin when I was wasted drunk. I could have died from that. I could have died so many times. And my guardian angel always saved me. And so I'm starting to realize this. I'm starting to realize that I'm, I'm, being, I'm being kept alive for some reason. Like God had a plan for me. And um, but I, I wasn't grateful. Like I didn't realize it. I didn't realize how, how big of a picture this is and how we're in a spiritual war and demons want you. Satan wants you. God wants you. It's a tug of war. And, um, so I was just, I was just learning all these things. And then, uh, another time, um, we did plant medicine in, in our house. It was, uh, San Pedro. And, um, I started to have a bad trip. Yeah, it's kind of like peyote. So it was very, it was subtle. Like, like the ceiling was, you know, beautiful colors swirling, but then it got bad. It got dark. And I, I thought it was starting to have a panic attack. And I just visualized that, you know, I was like, the scenario is I have to call the, I have to call 911 and the ambulance is going to pull up in front of our landlord's house. He's going to know that something's going to go, go on, that something's going on. He's going to come back with the police and the ambulance and they're going to see us. And we are out of our minds right now. We're high. We're super high. I mean, we're, I'm seeing tracers and I'm just like, this is going to get real bad. If I, if I freak out right now, it's going to get worse. Cause I know when you're on these, like, you know, when you're on something, it's a hundred times worse. It amplifies whatever emotion you're on. And I was like, this is bad. And I was so freaked out that I sincerely, and you have to do this with all sincerity of your heart. You can't just be like, Jesus, help me. I, I did it with all of my heart and sincerity. And I was freaking out. And I was like, Jesus, 
please help me. And at that moment, I was instantly sober. And I looked over to my fiance and I was like, I'm completely sober. And she was crying, but she was crying because it was beautiful. And she saw, she was seeing God in nature looking out the windows, you know, so she's still tripping and I'm sober. And I'm like, Jesus just sobered me. I've never experienced this in my life. And she's like, wow, that's beautiful. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, wow. And, um, so that convinced me even more of, of God's power. And, um, but I started backsliding and, um, you know, I just drifted away and, and I did get baptized and that was amazing. Um, but right when I got baptized, I got angry and I, I heard about this in other videos that, you know, when you get baptized, the demons are more threatened than ever. And when you start turning towards the Lord, demons are going to attack you more than ever. They don't care when you're backsliding. They don't care when you're sinning. They're like, oh, he, we got him. We got him. We don't even have to watch him. But when you start turning to the Lord, they're like, we got to put some bad thoughts in his brain. And so, yeah, I was kind of frustrated and I was like, I don't really feel born again. And it was, it was a sweet baptism and I cried and I was very happy, but then it turned to frustration and we went and got fast food and we had an argument. And I was just like, what the heck's going on here? Um, so after that, um, I backslid for a few more years and, but God just kept working on me. And, um, so one more story and then I'll let you go. Uh, so a couple years passed and now my fiance and I are living in Texas and we're having a really hard time. We're, we're dirt, dirt poor, no money. We're eating junk food to feel good. I'm watching a lot of TV, gain like 60 pounds. And I was nervous because my parents were going to come visit. And, uh, I had a panic attack around my parents like 10 years earlier. So now I'm like, is that going to happen again if I see my parents? And, you know, I was scared of having another panic attack, but really it was just demons of fear and, and, uh, whatever. So before they came, I started listening to a worship on YouTube. It was, uh, I forgot, I think it was Jesus culture or something like that. It was a church in Florida and amazing worship it lasted like three hours. I, it might be Jesus image, um, but they did one worship and the band was so amazing. I mean, they just crescendo after crescendo, climax after climax. And by the time you listen to an hour of it, you're, you're just exhausted, but uh, completely full of the spirit. And I was crying and I, I listened to that every night. Plus I listened to a demonic clearing uh, audio. So with those two things... Uh, every night for uh, two weeks before my parents were to come and I honestly was like, God, I need you. And it was like a veil lifted from my eyes and I could see clear um, because I always went back to, uh, you know, masturbating and, and dark music. And when you have a veil over your eyes, you don't know you have a veil over your eyes until it's lifted. And when it's lifted, then you can see clear and you, you get a sense of peace back and love. But when you have the cloud over your eyes, you don't know you're, you're sinning. You don't know you're in a dark world. I mean, you can sometimes, you know, you're on and off. You can check in and be like, oh yeah, I'm pretty dark right now. But it, when it lifts, that's when you're like, really know that you were in a, a, a dark spell. And so I popped out of that spell and um, I had this sense of peace that I had never experienced in my whole life. And it was um, the demonic clearing audio that I listened to. The speaker said that um, when you do this every day, you will eventually feel what it feels like to be entity free. And at that moment, I knew what he meant because I was 
so peaceful. It, it was it was better than any drug. It was it was it was a thousand times it was God's it was Jesus's peace. His name is the Prince of Peace for a reason. I I felt so peaceful, and it lasted for the whole trip. Seeing my parents, I was calm. I didn't have to take Valium or anything. I was just like, hey, I love you guys. You know, thanks for visiting. And um, that night when the veil lifted and I felt that peace, I could also smell a sweet aroma in the room. It was like the angels cleared the whole place. So I'm an avid believer now, or I'm, I, I am just full on with Jesus. And just recently, uh, a rock singer died from the band um, Crazy Town. His name was Shifty something. I, I always forget his last name. But he was only 49 and, and drugs took him out. And um, it's not like I was close to that guy or the band. I mean, it was like a one hit wonder. But I was listening to music just three night or last night. I was listening to music last night. I was dancing. It's something I do in sobriety. I geek out. I dance. I, I praise God. I praise, I, uh, you know, I... I I say, you know, this is for you guys to my deceased friends. And, and now I do it main, mainly for Jesus because I don't want to idolize my deceased friends. But uh, Crazy Town came on with that uh, butterfly song, you know, butterfly, sugar, baby, you know, and it was a hit. And he was good looking back then. In his 20s, he was ripped, good looking, blonde hair, brown eyes. And uh, so I was like, wonder what he's doing today. And I knew that he was on Celebrity Rehab a couple years ago. He had a meth problem. And I was like, I wonder what he's doing. And I sat down on the couch and I Googled, uh, is the crazy town singer still alive? And and brand new video, uh, crazy town singer's autopsy results. And he literally died four, year, uh, four days ago. And I was just like, wow, that could have been me. But God got me sober. I quit drinking cold turkey, um, quit cigarettes. Uh, I threw out all my, I, you know, all my idolatry stuff. And I, I, I am more on fire for God than ever. And he's patient and he works on you. He works with you. He guides you. Um, and um, it gets deeper. It gets deeper and... and you start to see miracles and gifts and you're like, wow, only God could do that. And uh, it's very subtle in the beginning. But when he sobered me up, that was very clear. And when I smelled the angel in my room and when I had a demon in me who got excited by fear, um, it is a complete demonic. It is a spiritual battle like no other. And if you watch enough near-death experience videos, which I have been lately, which scared me straight. I'm going to church tomorrow, first time in like 10 years. Um, if you watch en enough of those near-death experiences where they go to hell, um, it's it's for eternity. And hell is real. And demons are real. And they mess with you. And they're little black shadows. And they can pop in and out of you. So make it so boring for them that they leave. Turn to Jesus and the demons will flee. Okay? I love you guys. Thank you for watching this testimony. Please leave a comment and like this video. And God bless. And it is a war zone out there. Please shine your light and get to know Jesus again. You don't have to. It, this isn't about religion. This is about a relationship. Just be like, hey, Jesus, I want you back in my life. I miss you. Please guide me. Please come back into my heart. Please, Jesus, I need you. Please give me eyes to see and ears to hear. Give me discernment and wisdom and your righteousness. Thank you for dying on the cross for all my sins. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all you got to do. And just get into a private place where you can do that with him every night. And he will get stronger and stronger in your life. And you'll start to notice that you don't like sin as much anymore. It won't have a sting. It won't, it won't hook you like it used to. The rock music doesn't hook me as much. Uh, I don't look at girls sexually anymore. 
um, it's it's really changing my life. And if, if it can change me, it can change anyone. So God bless you. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.